and we're getting changes. I mean, this is, look at this. This is the future, y'all, when it comes to AI and our development process. In today's video, let's check out eight, an IDE that has AI in it. We're gonna go ahead and put this AI agent to the test to see if it's any good at coding, helping us code and creating actual web apps or software. So by the end of this video, are we gonna give aid an A plus? Let's jump in. Today's video is sponsored by Aid. They reached out to me and they're like, hey Corbin, we got a pretty cool IDE. We want you to check it out. I'm like, what's up? Went ahead and checked it out. And as we know, when developing any type of code or software, artificial intelligence is becoming basically non-negotiable. Yeah, you could still code without AI, but it's like doing a math problem without a calculator. Why put yourself through that? So let's go and check it out. I'll make sure to leave a link to this in the description down below download so in this video we're going to do a react based project just to show you how to even code in this kind of environment we're going to be checking out all of its cool features like the assistant over there but let's go ahead and get started here and choose our theme you already know we gotta go with dark modern why corbin because if it's 1 a.m i don't want to see that in my screen it's just going to burn my eyes so we're going to do dark modern so now that we have our theme here let's jump around eight a little and see what this user interface has for us first thing we need to go ahead and make sure we do is log in so we get access to all of its really cool ai features best part is this is free Log in, choose email or GitHub. I'm going to do Git with my nice little Git profile here. I'm going to say authorize code story AI. We've been authenticated and we're logged in. Let's go ahead and get started here and see all of its capabilities. I'm going to come down here to this little button. I'm going to click these three ellipses and let's go to terminal. First thing I want to do is let's go ahead and store all of our code to a specific folder on our computer. So we can start editing, creating, and seeing some cool UI. Therefore, I'm going to do MKDIR cool UI. Once that's done, we're gonna go in and just open this folder. Hit open. Make sure to select your relevant folder. And then from here, we're obviously gonna trust this as we just created it. So yes, I trust the authors because I am the author. Now let's go ahead and initialize our React base app. To do this, we're gonna go down the same little workflow here, three ellipses, open up that terminal. Notice that we are in cool UI. That means we're in the relevant folder that you see right here in this IDE. And then simply we'll put in the command npx create react app dot enter. We are creating a React base app and we're gonna do some cool stuff with AI and this IDE. So once we do that, we're gonna see all these super cool files over here, which we're gonna be able to learn more about using our nice little assistant here. First off, as I like to do in development, let's just see what the heck this code even looks like. To do that, we can approach this in two separate ways. First way is that you already know the command line. The second way is we can just talk to this assistant. So we're gonna come over here to chat and we're gonna give context here. I'm simply gonna say, we have a React app. I forgot how to run it to see it in localhost 3000. And that's the specific use case of this chat feature. This is like we're having conversation about what we're doing in the code here to help us out along the way. Now, what I like about this is that back in the old days, if you remember, you'd have to scour through the internet, look through Reddit forms, Stack Overflow. Oh, no, no, no. Now we get it fast. So what you can see right here is we got NPM start. Let's try it. NPM start, hit enter. So far, so good. Success. So we set up our code environment here and notice that all that code that's been reflected in localhost 3000 can be found in our app.js. But let's say we didn't know that. I can hit new chat and we can start using another feature here by aid, which is our ability to add context in the chat, which is pretty important in coding because a lot of times you don't wanna start in a fresh slate. You wanna give code files or just more idea of what code we're even working with. So if I come up here to edit, you can see we have a couple options here. But what I like typically doing, especially if you're new to development, is just select everything. So I'm gonna open this, 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 and this. This could seem excessive if you've coded before, but really, if you are just approaching coding for the first time, especially in the context of an AI IDE, this is the best route. You wanna give as much information before you start talking to it so you get correct answers. Edit, and we're gonna select all. I'm gonna hit okay, and watch this. We don't even need to use developer jargon. We can simply just ask what the heck's going on. When I do NPM start, I notice it renders in localhost 3000. How do I change the code shown here? I see a moving image and text. A moving image and some text. Now, obviously, if we read the text, it tells us the answer, but let's just assume we don't do that. Hit enter. Aid is generating. And there we go. It gave us our answer here where it's defined in the app.js. So now we know we make changes here. So instead of saying and save to reload, I just say coffee is amazing and hit save, you'll see Kafi is amazing. So fundamentally, that's one of the first major points of aid and its ability to integrate AI in our workflow is we can just talk of our code base, get more context of what's even occurring here and ask very specific questions with this pin context feature. So with that done, I'm gonna unselect these. Therefore, when we're talking to aid, the next question you might be asking is like, okay, this is cool, but Corbin, what model are we even using? If we come down here to our bottom right, we can click Clots on it, and this is what we have access to within 8, which is pretty cool. GBT 4.0, 3.5, Code Llama, Code Llama. 
Deep Sea Coder, Claude Sonnet, Haiku. I mean, whichever one you like coding with based off your past, go ahead and choose. Personally, I typically like either GBT4 or Claude. I typically lean towards GBT more. Why? Just because I like GBT. But for now, we'll stick with Sonnet. And let me show you something really cool that I really like about Aid here is our ability just to select some code. So for example, let's say I select my return statement, hit Command K, I can be like, you know what? I want some code. And we could do something like, please code out a modern UI landing page for an article describing how amazing corned beef hash is with Tabasco sauce. That's a real statement. That's what I like to call facts. And then what you'll notice is that we're gonna get our nice little execution over here. And we'll get all the relevant code show up right here. Now I'm a little zoomed in. So I'm gonna do this real quick. And we're getting changes. I mean, this is, look at this. This is the future, y'all, when it comes to AI and our development process. So looking at all this code here, I can hit accept all. With that done, make sure you hit save in the JS, save in the CSS. And oh yeah, we're cooking. I mean, that looks really good. I kind of want to eat that right now. We got a nice little header image. Obviously, this is very much a placeholder image that we could put the real corned beef hash here. If I scroll down here, it knew exactly what to do. Even as far as this nice little UI of quick recipe and all the relevant stuff to make the perfect corned beef hash, we've said Tabasco sauce. So far, so good. And what I really like that you just saw in that workflow right there is notice how we can either reject all, accept all, or save. I think one thing that's kind of broken in the market when it comes to integrating AI in your coding workflow is sometimes it doesn't have that little insurance check where it's just like, hey, hey, you actually want this change? Some platforms, you just put it in a prompt like that and it just starts kicking. Kicking to the point where it's like, whoa, 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 you just changed like 40% of what I just coded for the last two weeks. So that's nice. We're able to see exactly what's changed, more context, keep proceeding. So you learn two major things about aid here, the ability to chat and the ability to execute. So we were able to pin context to an entire chat, but we're also able just to add very specific files that we care about. No, not adding like adding me on X, okay, for at, and then we can either put code or file. So we'll do app.js. Now two things I want you to notice here. The first thing is that we're gonna be able to reference app.js, which is gonna be the entire code file. That's cool. But the second one, and I did this on purpose, is I'm asking for the UI to pop a little bit more when it comes to color. And as we know, that usually is done in the CSS. What's cool is aid here is contextually gonna know that if there is an app.css and we're importing from the app.css, therefore we need to make some changes to there. I'm gonna hit edit here, enter. For more context here, when I was saying chat or execution, I meant like chat or edit. Edit being actually making changes to your repo while chat is more of just like, what's even going on? Asking questions about your repo. When I say repo, all those files over there. So there we go. It lasered in on the JS and it actually identified, whoa, 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 you want to make the colors pop more, but that's done in the CSS rather than the JS. Okay, therefore, let's do that. We're gonna do at app.css, hit enter, Let's see what happens. And with that simple request, we were able to get a nice little color pop here, like an orange hue. So there you go. Now you know how to create a React-based app within aid here, able to chat with it, understand it, and even execute code using artificial intelligence. When it comes to pricing, we got two major tiers here so far. We got the free one, which we all like. Let's just see if we even like the product so you can completely install for free. Check it out in the description down below. But then the second tier here, which is $20, which is basically the cost of a ChatGPT subscription, allows for infinite invocations. That's important. I think every other AI IDE on the market right now, you're still capped on the amount of times you can talk to AI in your workflow. So when they say infinite, they mean infinite. You know, infinite and beyond. Well, they're going beyond. There we go. That's everything we need to know about aid as fast as possible. I'll see you in the next video. It's AI encoding. AI coding. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.